In this video, we're going to demonstrate the techniques for determining the Thevenin equivalent circuit by looking at a relatively simple circuit and going through the different steps that we'll be uh, using to, to do this. The first thing we need to determine is the open circuit voltage. The Thevenin voltage, or the voltage in our Thevenin model, consists of a Thevenin voltage, which we said, if we pointed out, is just the open circuit voltage. So in this case, we need to know what the voltage between A and B is with nothing connecting A and B. As you look at this, you can see then that the voltage, the open circuit voltage, is the voltage across R2. Now we can use any method we want to determine the voltage across R2. We could calculate the current through running through these, which, because this is open circuit, we should point out, there is no current going through that branch. That means that these two resistors are in series, and by definition, the current is going to be the same through both of them. So we could calculate the current through those two resistors, and then multiply R2 by that, by that current, and that would give us the open circuit voltage, or the voltage across R2. We could also use our voltage divider, which was developed. We derived that voltage divider formula by taking advantage of the fact that those two resistors were in series. So let's just do that. V open circuit is equal to, then, V sub S times R2 over R1 plus R2. For this circuit, that is our V Thevenin. So to get the open circuit voltage, use any of the voltage, any of the circuit analysis techniques that you have to determine the voltage across the open terminals. Next, we need to determine the Thevenin resistance. And at that point, we will have our Thevenin equivalent circuit. Now we're going to see that there are at least three different methods for determining the Thevenin resistance, and we're going to demonstrate each of those models on this simple circuit. The first method takes advantage of the definition of R Thevenin. You'll recall from our previous video, we said that R Thevenin was defined as the ratio of the open circuit voltage to the short circuit current. Now in the previous slide, we determined that the open circuit voltage was just the voltage across R2 in this case, which was V sub S times R2 over R1 plus R2. Now we need to determine what the short circuit current is. By the short circuit current we mean if we short, put a wire between the two terminals A and B, and then determine what that current is that flows through that short circuit, that's the short circuit current. Well in this case, the short circuit pulls the voltage here to zero so there would be no current going through R2. And the short circuit current then is simply the current that would be flowing through R1, or I short circuit is equal to V sub S divided by R1. So you then using this first method, method one, we say then that the open, that the R Thevenin is equal to the ratio of the open circuit voltage to short circuit current. We form that and say then the R Thevenin is equal to V open circuit divided by I short circuit, which is equal to V sub S times R2 over R1 plus R2. That's our open circuit voltage. Divided by the short circuit current, which is V sub S over R1. Well, the V sub S is cancel. We take this 1 over R1 in the denominator, invert and multiply, and we get then that R Thevenin is equal to R1 R2 over R1 plus R2. So the first method, which always works, at least it works if you've got an independent source in the circuit that you're attempting to model, method one then is to determine the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current using tip using any circuit analysis method you'd like, and then forming the ratio of the open circuit voltage to the short circuit current. The second method works when all you have, or the only types of sources you have, are independent sources. It works only with independent sources. And in this method, or to, to apply this method, we deactivate 
any of the sources, any sources present. And by deactivate, we mean the same thing that we did back when we were talking about superposition. When you deactivate a voltage source, you turn the voltage source to zero. Or in this case, or a voltage source turned to zero is effectively a short circuit. So having deactivated the, the independent sources present, we then calculate the resistance seen looking back into the circuit. Well, looking back into it, with this point pulled to ground by deactivating the voltage source, we see then that R1 and R2 are in parallel with each other. And the resistance that we see going back into the, the AB terminals is R1, R2 over R1 plus R2, which is the same result we got on the previous, using the previous method. The third method involves applying a test voltage at the terminals and pushing a current back into the circuit, pushing a current back into the circuit after deactivating the sources. This is somewhat like going back to our powertrain analogy or, or a, uh, an automobile analogy. It would be sort of like turning off the engine and then blowing back into the exhaust pipe and measuring the resistance to the movement of air going back into the, into the exhaust pipe. So, method three, deactivate the independent sources. If you have dependent sources present, don't deactivate them. Deactivate just the independent sources. And then apply a test voltage. We'll call it V test, V T for test, that's not the Thevenin voltage, it's V test, which will force a test current to flow back into the circuit again after we have deactivated the source then the resistance that we feel going back into it is simply the ratio of the test voltage divided by the test current. So our approach now requires us to come up with an equation or more than one equation that allows us then to, by just algebraic manipulation, form the ratio V test over I test. Let's just do it. It's easier to show than it is to, to tell about it. When we apply this after deactivating the voltage source, we see that we have only one node here. And that node is, in fact, at least in this circuit, the voltage, our test voltage V test. So let's write a node equation here at this node in terms of the node voltage V test. The current leaving this node going through R1 is going to be V test divided by R1 is the current leaving going this way. The current coming down here through R2 is going to be added to it, plus V test divided by R2. Now you'll notice that I test is directed into the node, so that would be minus I test equals zero. Now let's factor out the common V test here, times one over R1 plus one over R2 and take I test to the other side as a positive I test. Getting a common denominator, we have then V test times R1 plus R2 over R1 times R2 is equal to I test. Now that we've got a factor of V test on this side, I test on that side, divide both sides by I test, and divide both sides by this term here, and we get then that V test over I test, which is our R Thevenin, is equal to R1, R2 over R1 plus R2, which is the same resistance that we determined through the other two methods. So again, this approach drives home the idea that what this Thevenin resistance represents is the restriction or the resistance seen looking back into the terminals of our circuit. Let's review then. Determining, we find the open circuit voltage using any method of circuit analysis we want. 
we then use one of three methods to determine R thevenin. The first method works when you have at least one independent source present. Method one then is to short between the output terminals and determine the short circuit current and then form the ratio V open circuit divided by I short circuit. That's method one. Method two works only if you have independent sources. And with only independent sources present, deactivate the independent sources. In this case, we had a voltage source that we shorted out. Had it been a current source, we would have open-circuited that current source and then determined the resistance, the equivalent resistance seen looking back in from A to B. Method two works only if independent sources are present. Method three works no matter whether you have, uh, works when you have both independent and dependent sources. If you have dependent sources, you de if you have independent sources, you deactivate any of the in independent sources by replacing voltage sources with short circuits and current sources with open circuits. And then apply a test voltage to the terminals. And then using algebraic manipulation techniques, derive the ratio of V test over I test. Three different options. Some options work under all circumstances. Other options work only at given certain circumstances. And in the next two or three videos, we'll go through and give examples demonstrating each of these three techniques in somewhat more complicated circuits.